Welcome. To Breaking Fears. Have you ever been in a shower singing and all of a sudden the water turns cold? Hey YouTube world, it's your man Rico with another video. Another video about DIY hot water tank replacement. So, uh, it is because of a subscriber asked if I could do a video about water tanks. So, I can only do a, about a gas water tank, not electric, but you could go online, you're on YouTube, look up plenty of people that do it. So I never filmed myself doing any of my hot water tank, gas hot water tank replacements. I, I never thought about doing it because I wasn't thinking about doing YouTube until recently. So when one of mine goes out, I might or might not film it. So to answer uh, their question, I figured I'd go online because there's hundreds of people now. As, as we all know on YouTube doing this. So I figured I'd go online and just kind of pick and pull some of the uh, shots of people doing it and talk about it as I'm showing it. With that being said, let's get into this. First, I'm going to play a video about how hot water tanks work. So in this uh, <clears throat> video that I'm going to show right now, I kind of, I, I was going to go and explain how it works, how a hot water tank works, but I think this video does a very good job on, on how it works and it does make sense for me to create it. Now this is just for a gas water heater. It's not for for electric. I think it talks about how gas water, water tanks work, but the innards work the same. It's just the mechanics, meaning like if it's gas or electric, but the innards, how it heats up the water is pretty much similar. A standard water heater burns gas to heat the water stored inside the insulated tank. So as you can hear, he's again, he's talking about the gas and the gas is this right here. So your gas line is coming in through here and feeding it into the valve here, which then once it's turned on, you, you got the igniter and everything and it turns on and switches on. But I'll let it explain more. But again, this is just for gas uh, water heater. When hot water is used, cold water enters through a dip tube and fills the bottom of the tank. The gas control valve uses a built-in thermostat to monitor the water temperature. When the thermostat senses the cold water, it opens up the main gas valve. Air is drawn from below the tank and mixes with the gas. The main... I'm sorry. So, as you heard, um, the, the water, when you're wondering why the, the, your water tank is a little bit above the ground, it's because it's pulling in air from the bottom so your burner can light. As you all know, fire needs air. So it's pulling the air in here, gets a mix, get a mixture to light the main burner with the gas. The burner ignites and the exhaust fumes rise up through the flue vent. The burner continues to heat the water until the set temperature is reached. Now, the reason why you have this flute above your gas the reason for this flute is to allow the carbon monoxide from your gas burning to go up through the fruit, flute and out of the house. So I thought that since I put on the gas water heater, I should probably put on an electric one just in case some people are asking how that works. So I went on uh, here for a video with uh, Repair Clinic. They're, they're a really good source on a lot of, lot of things stoves, washers, dryers, all that stuff. So if you want to go visit them, you can also find out a lot of this from them. But here is their, they're explaining how a electric water heater works. The tank and the heating elements both affect how efficiently the water heater operates. And if you, hold on, I'll, both the incoming cold water pipe. So as you can see, here would be that vent, right up here would be a vent for a gas water tank. 
with a electric water tank there is none as you can see on top i just wanted to point that out so that's one of the uh, difference between the two the incoming cold water pipe attaches to the dip tube in the water heater the dip tube distributes the incoming water to the bottom of the tank to ensure that all of the water is heated thoroughly if the tube deteriorates and breaks the incoming water will stay near the top of the tank where it won't heat properly although the interior of the water tank is metal it's coated with enamel which prevents salt chemicals and other minerals in the water from attacking the metal to further protect the tank and dip tube an anode rod is used to attract corrosive minerals so i just want to point this out too both water tanks have this the gas as well as a electric and this is why they have these anode rods in here and Technically, you're supposed to change them out every four years. Some water sources, such as well water, may attack the anode rod, which can result in a strong sulfur smell. However, removing the rod is not recommended, since the corrosive minerals it attracts can quickly deteriorate the tank and cause it to fail. Most electric water heaters use 240 volts of alternating current to operate two heating elements one near the middle of the tank and one near the bottom let, let me let me back up here so as you could see in this electric tank unlike the gas tank the burner is down below here where it heats the water from top to bottom with an electric water tank it has these heating elements like it stated that heats up the water middle of the tank and one near the bottom. Each element is controlled by its own thermostat. The thermostats maintain the water temperature inside the tank by opening and closing contacts that allow voltage to flow to the heating elements. The elements are designed to cycle on one at a time and the frequency of these cycles depends on how much heat is needed. So that's just a little discussion about how both a gas and electric water tank heater works. Now you've got also one that's a tankless, but I haven't dealt with that. Don't know how they work. <laughs> so I'm not even, well, I kind of have a feeling how they work, but I'm not going to go into that because I don't want this video to be too long. So let's go through some quick steps of once you're, you find out your water tank is not working, how to disconnect, put in a new one, and get your water out again. Okay, so here's a water tank heater. This is the one uh, I had to install this one. Oops, I installed this one. It's a shorty. It's called a short tank. Let me turn it this way. I hope this works. I don't know if this is going to work. It was called a shorty. And a hot water tank is easy to install. To me, it is. All you have to do is one, you want to turn this off. This one here is where your hot water is coming out of, this connection right here. So the cold water comes in here, sits in a tank, sink boils, blah, 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 gets the hot water. Once the hot water is turned on, it comes up and it pushes pressure up the hot water up through here and into your house. If you do not have a shutoff valve here, you have to go over to the wall, the wall valve to turn off your whole water in all your house. That, that valve, shut off valve is here. So you wanna turn it, right now it's, the water's turned off. You turn it, this one, which goes into the house, and then you turn this one, which comes from the outside into the house. It stops the water from coming in to your meter, which your meter is right here, okay? Once all that's shut off, so once all the water is shut off going into your water tank, turn on your hot water at any faucet and let it run until it stops running. Turn off the gas. So you got your gas line that goes right here. And your gas line is right here. So you take this switch and you turn it to the off position. And I will show you in a different video or in a different part of this video. And then you would disconnect this portion here. You want this here because what happens, gas creates a 
condensation, which makes the water go down here, which now the water's not going into your, into your heater thing here. So what you want to do is disconnect it from here and here. Take Disconnect here first, and then disconnect it from here. Then what you want to do is you always want to reuse this drain pipe here. This, this pipe is, is when uh, there's like too much pressure, it'll drain from there. The, the, the steam and stuff will come out from there. This is coming from outside into your water tank. This here is your exhaust vent. So you want to take out the two screws here, disconnect here and here. Once all those are disconnected, you come down to your drain hose, which is right here. You open this up, a water will come out. Make sure you hook a hose up to the spout before you open it up to drain the tank. Have it either drain in a bucket if you do not have a floor drain next to it. Once all the connections are off, you can now remove the old tank and then replace it with the new one. Once in place, put some Teflon around both screw threads of the tank, the hot and cold. Tighten on the, the piping. If you have had to cut the, the copper piping, say for instance you had copper piping, you had to cut that. Clean it up and then put some compression fittings on your pipes going from the hot water tank to the in and out to the hot and cold uh, copper piping. I used... As you can see on my tanks, I use PEX piping. But again, make sure that you have this all clean. Another thing is I like to use these stainless steel, as you can see on mine, the stainless steel flexible piping going from the hot water tank to the PEX pipe. Because it's one, the stainless steel it doesn't really rushes as fast, and two, they're flexible. Say, for instance, your tank is too big or too... Uh, short they're flexible and they can bend and stretch versus the copper piping and you don't want to bend uh you can't really bend the pex piping like you can with the flex stainless steel so next you want to hook up your exhaust vent or reconnect next you want to hook up your water heater igniter switch put some teflon tape around the connector that goes into your water heater same thing with your inline coming in from the glass yeah. Tighten the line, turn on the gas. Test to see if you see any leaks using some so like a soapy solution. The gas will make the soapy solution bubble up like this. Do not use this yellow flex tube. It's not a good thing to, to use. Use the actual black piping to connect this unit. So once you have the water lines hooked up and the gas line hooked up, the water turned on and the gas turned on, you want to start the flame for your water heater tank. So what you want to do is turn that water heater ignition to pilot. Push it in and hold it in. At the same time, click the bottom black button as you can see there, here. Click it until you see the blue light start flashing. Once the blue light starts flashing, hold the pilot switch in still keep pressing it in wait for maybe 10 seconds 20 i would say 20 seconds let it up if it stays blinking you'll know that the flame is lit after that you turn it to your uh, temperature that you want your water to be at and you can read the manual on the tank to find out which is best or the instructions for you. Now, once that's all done, you go upstairs, you uh, turn the faucet back on, let the air come through, because of course you're, there's going to be air flowing through, like you can see here at the, the, this faucet. And once it starts running steadily, you're good. Let the water tank sit for, I would say, an hour. Let it sit for an hour. That way you know your water is going to be good and hot by the time you really start using it. Go back upstairs or whatever faucet is close and just turn on your hot water. Wait a few seconds to see if your hot water is uh, hot. If it's hot, you're good to go. And that's it for uh, this video. 
that's all you have to do to hook up a, like I said, just a gas water heater. Nothing else. Electric, again, to go online. Now, I'm not a plumber. Again, I'm not a licensed plumber. This is just a DIY. This is what I did when I hooked up my water, hot water tanks. Again, go online. You could probably see a lot of other people doing this. So, yeah, just get educated. Watch a few films. Just don't watch mine and think you're going to be an expert at this. Watch mine. Watch other people's. Uh, there's some other people out there probably do a lot better job than I did with this video. Again, I'm, I'm new to this YouTube thing, so I might have missed out on some stuff. And again, I'm not an expert. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you call an expert. Have some, a professional come and do this for you. Because one of the main and important things that I have to say is that, that exhaust vent. You don't want that carbon monoxide coming into your house. Make sure that exhaust vent is working. A, a trick that I saw online was to light a match and see if the smoke from the match goes up that vent. If, the, if it does, if it goes up that flute, you're good. If it's pushing back out towards you, it's bad. You're going to need somebody to come and clean it out, find out what's going on with that exhaust vent. But you do not want that carbon monoxide coming back into your house. And also, make sure you have a carbon monoxide wherever that hot water tank is or close by. Uh, because if it, if it ever does, that food ever does get closed, it'll go off for you. So, thank you for watching. Until our next video, see ya!